Hey guys and welcome to Zonus Crypto. Today we have some news about a market analysis. Wintermute loses some money to a hack. Something about the Fletch and all about the Fed and also many more. Okay, then let's get right into the market watch. Bitcoin is coming in at almost 19,000, Ethereum 30 and 36, BNB at 266, XRP at 38 cents, Cardano at 44 cents, Solana at 31.78, Polkadot at 6 bucks and 22 cents, Polygon at 73 cents, and also Avalanche at 16.69. Overall, we're up 1.09% over the last 24 hours. Then let's hit the first news. Long the Bitcoin bottom or watch and wait, Bitcoin traders plan their next move. BTC faced a 9% correction in the early hours of September 19th as the price traded down to 18,270. Even though the price quickly bounced back above 19,000, this level was the lowest price seen in 3 months. However, pro traders held their ground and were not inclined to take the loss, as measured by derivatives contracts. Everyone is keeping, keeping the tabs open on maybe a lower price for BTC. The bottom could be in, but it depends on the macroeconomic and global hurdles. Derivatives metrics suggest that the Bitcoin price dump on the 19th was partially expected, which explains why the 19,000 support was regained in less than two hours. Still, none of this will matter if the US Federal Reserve raises the interest rates above the consensus or if stock market collapse further due to energy crisis and political tensions. To sum it up in a short, in one short sentence, if the Fed decides to raise more than 75 basis points and or the stock market or the home market crashes more, then BDC will crash more and more and we will see some more blood in the streets. Mintermute loses 160 million dollars in latest DeFi hack. Wintermute CEO Evgeny Jevoy said that the company remains solvent. Wintermute has been hacked for 160 million. The hacker targeted the firm's DeFi operations. Its centralized activity and over-the-counter services are unaffected. Wintermute founder and CEO Evgeny Jevoy has said the firm is still solvent and user funds are safe. The Fed sledgehammer will further better BDC ETH prices. Bloomberg analyst. With the merge resulting in a buy the rumor sell the news event, Mike McLone thinks that ETH might drop to a thousand or even a bit lower, given how hawkish the Fed has been. Ahead of the latest Fed interest rate hike to be announced this week, the market is expecting a minimum of a 75 basis point increase. However, some fear it could be as high as 100 basis points, which would represent the biggest rate hike in 40 years. If that is the case, that we will see a 100 basis point hike be ready, it might get a little bit more ugly. Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin shares vision for layer 3 protocols. Layer 3 protocols? While layer 2 protocols have been focused on scalability, layer 3 protocols would serve a much different purpose, says Vitalik Buterin. One of layer 3's use cases would be what Buterin describes as customized functionality referencing privacy-based applications which would utilize CK proofs to submit privacy-preserving transactions to layer 2. Another use case would be customized scaling for specialized applications that don't want to use the Ethereum virtual machine EVM to do the computation. But Buterin added that it's still unclear whether layer 3 structures will be more efficient than the current layer 2 model when it comes to building customized applications on Ethereum. Think of it like there is a thought, and if the thought is even getting developed more or not, depends on how scalable or efficient layer 3s could or would be. If it's efficient, it's a great and new investment niche. Before we go to the next news, if you think the video has been interesting so far, then please leave a like, subscribe, and also hit the bell. What would Ethereum layer 3 look like? Vitalik Buterin has some ideas. Now to sum it up in a small summary. Vitalik Buterin has published a blog post outlining how layer 3 scaling solutions could work. He stated that layer 3 solutions cannot consist of stacked rollups 
as this would not result in efficient data compression. Buren outlined two possibilities, layer 3 platforms with specialized functions and batch verifier contracts. This to Ethereum. Now to something about Alameda. Alameda repays 200 million in Bitcoin and Ethereum to bankrupt crypto broker Voyager. Sam Bankman frees crypto trading firm Alameda Research the return about 200 million in cryptocurrencies to the now bankrupt Voyager Digital. Alameda, the crypto grant trading firm co founded by Sam Bankman fried the billionaire owner of crypto derivatives exchange FTX, owes Voyager approximately 200 million in an outstanding crypto loan. This amount originates from a line of credit that was worth 377 million before the crypto market's crash earlier this year. Per the filing, Alameda will return Voyager about 6.5 thousand BTC and about 51,000 ETH by September 30th this year. An outstanding amount. Crypto investors yanked money from ETH products despite a smooth Ethereum merge. ETH funds saw outflows for a fourth straight week, even as BTC products won inflows, according to CoinShares. You could say that the ETH merge was a little bit overhyped and people are now or have taken some profits if they bought in lower at 800 about three months ago and sold it at 1600 and then put it into BDC. This could be, in my opinion, their move. Bloomberg's Mike McLone predicts when BTC will tap 100k and ETH 6k. Always take it with a grain of salt. Predictions might almost always not come true. Mike McLone, senior commodity strategist at Bloomberg, argued that the crypto winter might last longer than previous market declines, and the reason for it is the Fed's sledgehammer. In the next few years, though, he expects the industry to emerge stronger than ever, with Bitcoin tapping 100,000 and Ethereum trading at 6,000 by 2025. Now to the last news of today, Vatir X follows in Binance's footsteps on listing USDC, USDP and TUSD. On September 19th, Vatir X, one of India's leading cryptocurrency exchanges, announced the delisting of Circuit's USDC, Paxos USDP and True USD stablecoins, effective September 26th, following in Binance's footsteps. Does this mean that USDC is losing the favor of the big players? Uh, no. Although Jeremy Allaire, CEO and co-founder of Circle, has recently said that the actions taken by Binance were not harmful to USDC. Let's see how long this will be the case or if it might become a harmful movement. Yeah, these were the news of today. I hope you've enjoyed it and if that's the case then please leave a like, subscribe and hit the bell. We will see us tomorrow. In the next video. Stay safe as always. Peace!